Hi everybody, I'm here today to talk to you just a little bit about term symbols so you can get a recap on that then. So what exactly is a term symbol and why is it important? So we can essentially summarize uh, three of the quantum numbers uh, by having this term symbol. And so this term symbol looks like 2s plus 1, this fancy looking L with the serifs, and then a subscript J. So this, um, these terms, this S, ranges anywhere from M sub S all the way to minus M sub S, and these are capital M's. Uh, this uh, parameter L is equal to capital M sub L all the way down to M sub L minus. This fancy looking L is S when L is zero. Um, and this is P when L is 1, D when L is 2, and finally F when L is 3 and continues. All right, and finally J is equal to uh, L plus S, or we could also say that this is equal to M sub J all the way down to minus M sub J. These are capitals. So for any capital M, this is equal to the sum of the lowercase m's. All right, so I think what's best for this is just to hop right into an example. Um, uh, first, we, when we talk about that, the number of states, the microstates, uh, is w. And that's equal, so if we had, let's say, um, m spin slots and m electrons, uh, that would look like, um, if I had m spin slots and n electrons, it would look like this. Or simply just m choose n, where m is the number of slots and n is the number of electrons. All right, let's see our example. So we're going to consider hydrogen as our example. So hydrogen just has the electron configuration 1s1 which is pretty easy to think about because you only have the two choices of spin up or spin down. Um, and this is 1s. So this has an L value of 0 in either case. Um, so thus we must have that capital M sub L is equal to 0. Um, but we see that capital M sub S is either equal to plus a half or minus a half. Uh, so this forces s to be 0. Up here we have l equals 0. Sorry, s is equal to 1 half. Because uh, it ranges from a half to minus half. l is equal to 0. So then we see that m sub j ranges from plus a half to minus a half. So j has to equal a half as well. So what do we think that the term symbol is then? All right, and my guess is you are thinking exactly that. Yeah, yeah. So our term symbol formula, remember, is 2s plus 1, that fancy L, and then j. So our s is equal to 1 half, so when we plug that in, we get 2, and the j value is equal to a half. So for our term symbol for hydrogen, this is 2s 1 half, which is read as doublet s 1 half, uh, because this is the multiplicity. All right, let's see a second example then. We're gonna keep it nice and light still, because um, it's easier to count the states. So let's consider helium and its ground state. So that's just 1s2. So there's only one possibility, right? Because you can't have both spin up or both spin down. Um, so again, this is for 1s. So we see that the, um, m sub l value is forced to be 0. Uh, since we have a spin up and spin down, this forces the capital M sub s to be 0, because this is a half minus a half. Um, so uh, then we see that l is forced to be 0, and s is forced to be 0, which forces j to be 0. So if we use the term symbol formula, 2s plus 1, l, j, um, this forces the term symbol for helium, for the ground state, to be 1s 
zero, or singlet s. All right, so as we can see that we're gonna get a number of term symbols that pop up, but there are only a few that we care about. So this actually comes back to the idea of uh, Hun's rule from like your general chemistry class. So before you probably thought about it as, oh, you're gonna fill up the subs shell sort of like one at a time, and then you can start having the spin pair that you think about. So this is sort of sometimes talked about as the bus rule. So Hun's rule, or Hun's rules, says that we want to maximize the multiplicity, um, or the 2s plus 1 term. Um, the second rule says if we have the same s, capital S for two states, we choose the larger L, And the third one says that if we have um, a less than half full, um, subshell, then we're going to have j equal to l minus s. If we have exactly half, it's going to be that j is equal to s. And if we have more than half, I'm writing more half and less half. This is equal to j is equal to l plus s. All right, so this is, again, you're finding the, uh, the Hun's rule state, the one that you'd normally consider in Gen Chem. All right, um, that's just a little side note, but that's how to determine that state. So now we're going to consider an, a harder example. So we'll consider oxygen. Um, oxygen in its ground state has an electron configuration that looks like uh, helium, and then 2s2, 2p4. All right. So let's actually consider the Hund's rule state first. Um, and then we'll do the rest of them. So the Hund's rule state, it's the one we always consider from Gen Chem. All right, so we got, we're rocking out our 2p electrons, uh, 0, or 1, 0, minus 1. We got 1 up, 1 up, 1 up, 1 down. All right. So that's the Hund's rule state that we considered from general chemistry. So um, what would the term symbol be for this? So uh, just maybe think about it for a second for yourself, uh, and then we'll come back. All right, so we thought about this, and um, so we see that the spin, the S, uh, is equal to 1. We see that L is also equal to 1. Uh, but since it's more than half full, J is equal to the sum of both of them. So we see that our term symbol for this, we use again this formula. We see that our term symbol has to be 3 P two, right? Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, maybe review the Hun's rule state uh, sort of thing again. So we're going to try to do all the states now. I'll even switch colors. Um, okay, so the number of microstates for oxygen is the number of spin slots. Choose the number of electrons. So the number of microstates is 6 choose 4. So if you remember Pascal's triangle, that's great. If not, uh, I'm sorry for your loss. So this is 15, all right? So we note that the possible choices, if we look up above, uh, our possible choices, we can have a maximum spin of 1, right? Uh, we can have a maximum L of 2. So with this, we can sort of take a look at a bit more information. So now we know that the M sub S can range from uh, 1, 0, minus 1. We know that the M sub L can range from um, 2, minus, or sorry, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, right? 
Okay, so we're going to make a chart. This chart is going to be uh, M sub S uh, indicating columns and M sub L indicating rows. All right, so we got M sub S up here. We, we're rocking out our zero, one, our one, zero, minus one, and then we got M sub L over here. We got two, one, zero, minus one, minus two. All right. I hopefully gave myself enough room for some of the slots. Uh, okay, great. So this is the chart that we're going to be looking at. So we found, uh, again, the maximum sort of multiplicity, um, right? We found our ground state. So our ground state, remember, had an M sub S of 1. Um, so we calculated up above, and has an L value of 1 as well. So it's going to go right here in the chart. All right, so we put it there in the chart. Now similarly, if we look down, uh, this has an M sub L of minus 1 um, in the same spin. So this is going to look like this. All right. And if we go up one to say that M sub L has to be zero, um, we can see that there's only one possibility for this. And up, up, down, up. Now on the other side, it's going to be the same exact pattern, except downs everywhere where there were ups. So we still have this here, except down, down. And then here we have down, up, down. And then here we have down. And then finally, down, down, and then the paired. Okay, so now we need to figure out the rest of them. So what do we do next? We're going to start at the very top. Is that a possible position? Great, so you got a chance to think about that, and you realize that the only way that this is possible is if you pair up the first two. So we can see that that's the only possibility for down here as well, is if we pair up those. All right, in the next slot, um, we see that the possibilities are, let's see, m sub l equal to 1, m sub s equal to 0. So we need to have a 0 spin. So the possibilities are this. We got 2, and I don't have much space here, so we got this. We're rocking that. The it's paired again, and then up down here, and then down up. So we're going to see the same exact thing down here, except we're going to have the pair in the far right position. So up, down, up, down, and then we'll go up, down, uh, down, up. All right, we got one last spot left. All right, so if you count, you notice we have three left. So it's for this spot right here. So our possibilities, I'm going to say the middle choice is if you have both of these paired at the end. And the other one is going to be if you had them paired at the middle, Let's say up, down here, and then down, up here. Because, again, you have to have a net spin of zero. So we found all 15. So uh, we can't distinguish anything in this sort of box, um, in each box. So here we have three microstates. Here we have two. We can't distinguish anything in that box. So we're just going to call them a bunch of X's. So now I'm going to redraw the chart. All right, now I put X's everywhere where we actually found a microstate. So in order to clump these into uh, term symbols, we think about the maximum value for M sub L. So for example, the maximum value for M sub L equaling 2 has an M sub S equal to 0, which means J is equal to 2, which implies that there has to be five terms associated with this clump. All right, so as far as term symbols go, uh, we can see that this in yellow is 1d2. So I'll go on and highlight that. And what's left then? All right, so then we see that the other possible term symbols are everything in green. We see that this has uh, m sub l value 1, m sub s equal to 1, um, which forces a triplet P, which splits into three uh, different term symbols. And finally, we have our singlet S naught. So I hope you learned something from these examples. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to be awesome. Have a great day. Thanks.